Hello everyone, I'm Darian and this is Unpacking, where we unlearn what's unhealthy. How's it going everybody? This is Just Fresh, better known as Warren on social media sites and near Rodney Sewell, depending on where you know me from. And we're here with our guest today. Theo Gervais. Right. Radio personality. Yes. Music artist. Yes. Social media influencer. Sure. You know, many, no many things, wear many hats, you know, going, yeah. you know, coming through your Instagram to see you do, do a lot of things. Sure. Uh, one of which is music. Uh -huh. and, and I was wondering, you know, going through, I see a couple of features and everything, because that's something that's, uh, that's, that's a passion of yours, is something that you do as a hobby? Yes, music is what brought me here. That's how I arrived, that was the vehicle okay. mm -hmm. that brought me here by way of my father. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was a musician growing up, okay. and then uh, transitioned to uh, a vocal musician. And, uh, you know, we're always listening to records okay. at the house, you know, 45s. We didn't have alarm clocks. We just, my dad would just play the record. And you knew <laughs> if you got to the second song, then you were running late. You needed to go ahead and get your butt up. <laughs> yeah, that's, I like that. I like yeah, that. before you, he rips the covers off, <laughs> off of you. Um, but yeah, you know, I grew up like in choirs and performing um, on stage plays and stuff like that. And so after athletics was done, um, you know, I made a return to the kind of entertainment industry doing like modeling and acting and everything. And then uh, I had uh, one of my best friends, uh, he had to sit down for a little bit, uh, but he was a rapper. Okay. And so uh, as soon as he came home, the first one of the first places he went was to the studio. Okay. And he brought me with him and I was just in the corner, just doodling and writing and kind of humming to myself and the producer kind of like, hey, man, come here. And he started listening to what I was writing. He was like, come back next week. And then, um, yeah, that was a while ago. And so I just kept writing, kept singing, kept writing, kept singing. Eventually it turned into a radio career because my songs were on the radio. I kept hanging out at the radio stations, turned into a radio career, which turned into, you know, um, what I'm doing now, which is radio, TV, music, and everything else. <laughs> yeah. So along the way, when you were doing music, mm -hmm. What are some of the things you face? I know because you're in radio now, and I know a couple of different artists now that are on radio, that are radio personalities that started off in music first. Mm -hmm. Was that something you were apprehensive about at first when you were doing that? The funny thing is, is uh, my mom, she wanted me to major in telecommunications, radio and television. So she had a foresight uh, of where, you know, my career would take me or where I should be. Um, so no, it wasn't a surprise. It wasn't a surprise. When I was young, I tell this story all the time. You might get sick of hearing this story, but I'm gonna tell it for you guys. When I was young, I had this like little Fisher Price recorder thing. Mm -hmm. You know, where I have to press the two buttons to record. Mm -hmm. And so what I used to do, I used to uh, interview myself. Okay. Uh, I would interview myself as a professional athlete. I'd interview myself as a R&B singer and I'd interview myself as an actor. And it was almost like I was uh, practicing to either be uh, big enough to interview somebody famous or be big enough to be interviewed by somebody famous. But I just kind of mentally and physically would just go through that process, you know, singing in the mirror with the calm, okay. performing with my cousins in front of the mirror, doing all that fun stuff. So no, it's not a surprise. I'm where I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Um, God knows that he, he told me I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. So. Lovely. Awesome. Um, you mentioned your father um, pulling his sheets off of you oh, when it's the first song. Yeah. Um, would you say that he was kind of um, strict and still disciplining you? or? Yeah, he was pretty strict. Um, I don't think in an extreme fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there was others that probably had more stricter fathers mm -hmm. than I did. But yeah, he was stern. Mm -hmm. He was stern um, enough to the point where he only had to tell me once. Um, and enough to the point where if my mom said, I'm gonna tell your father, yeah, we me and my brother tightened up a little bit. Uh -huh. we, we'd hear that car coming in the driveway, man, <laughs> kind of get nervous, start cleaning stuff up all of a sudden. So he wasn't, he was the right amount of, uh, you know, disciplinarian, it was the right amount. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing overboard. When you were growing up, because like you said, you play a sport, you went to athletics and mm -hmm. you played football and yeah. during your short story, you stated that um, one of the things that you would hear was rub some dirt on it. Rub some dirt on it. Okay. So, and you were like, your thing is, you don't want to raise your kids to think that it's not okay to show their emotions or right. to cry or to go through that. So with, fo the, with football, do you, would you say that it's something that kind of like 
or just being a young man period do you feel like there's something that's there where they suppress our emotions and they tell us we can't like we can't be vulnerable in that state and we can't cry and if you cry you're not tough right absolutely absolutely you know i've played football and you know um you know in high school and, and played a little bit in a minor league and there's always this fear and and this with anybody that's strapped on a helmet before there's always this fear that if you are hurt you're going to lose your position if you miss practice you're going to lose your position if you miss a play you're going to lose your position there's always somebody right behind you that wants your position and so you got you had it in your mindset to just walk it off mm -hmm. you know and uh, the whole adam you know rub some dirt on it just you know whatever you got going on whether it's a, a cut or whatever you rub some dirt on it, you get back in yeah and um you know it's it's they would ask, you know, are you hurt or are you injured? Because if you hurt, you can still play, yes. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if you're injured, you can't. And so when somebody says that to you, the first thing you say, oh, I'm just hurt. I'll go back in. Mm -hmm. I'll go back in. And then, you know, um, in the higher levels of football, you know, they're shooting guys with painkillers, mm -hmm. not knowing that they're doing permanent damage. Mm -hmm. I love the game of football and I love the discipline it gave me and things like that. But there's, I now in my adulthood, I realize that some of those some of those things that I learned in football weren't uh, conducive to uh, to like fully fully okay. being a human, a functioning emotional human. Yeah, yeah. Healthy, you can't okay. right. Mm -hmm. You can't rub dirt on everything. Mm -hmm. This is true. <laughs> you know, and sometimes when you play football for so long or just an athlete for so long, you kind of take that mindset and just suck it up keep going suck it up keep going and, and instead of just like oh, wait wait what's wrong yeah you're mm -hmm. like w w w what's going on what caused this what how can we fix this mm -hmm. yeah. so is there experience with your children where you um after going back and replaying it in your mind you were like oh i may have used one of those i know i know it for a fact is a is there an experience that you can remember that yeah you're like oh because i coached my son and his basketball team okay mm -hmm. And I did use the term, I did tell him like, you know, whether you're hurt or injured. And so I do want him to learn perseverance, mm -hmm. you know, and, and being tough and, and, and toughing out, doing it for your teammates and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, do, I definitely want him to be able to say, look, I'm not having fun or I don't want, I don't want to play. It, it hurts. Like, I really don't want to play. I want him to be able to do that. But you know, uh, as a dad and as a former athlete, you know, I'm, I know for a fact my intensity probably got to a level. It's mm -hmm. eight-year-old basketball. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you forget. Yeah, you know, I depend, depend, I've, I've been to a couple of uh, little league basketball games and, and football serious. games. And people, the parents are much more intense than the kids. Oh, yeah. The kids are just running around. Have and the parents out there, like, we're trying to get to the NFL. Today. Focus, do what I said. <laughs> yes. So I, I can definitely see how that could, you know, take that kind of turn for, uh, for most people. Because we tend to forget when we're, we're in the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, even as a spectator of the sport, uh, the NBA Finals, LeBron James mm -hmm. playing uh, the Heat are playing the San Antonio Spurs and yeah. air condition is out in the stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. LeBron James plays pretty much the entire game almost. Yeah. And he can't just a cramp towards the end of the game. Everybody's like, LeBron James is weak. Yeah, man. And I'm like, he's he's a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if he could play, he would. Yeah. But they literally had to carry him off the court. And as, as a man, other men look at him <laughs> and say, oh, he's weak because yeah. he can't persevere through professional yeah. Yeah. athletic cramps not the type of right. cramps that we get just outside yeah. normal day. he's like he's played the entire game he's exhausted all the energy in his body yeah and he still looked at as a weak man because he can't push through that have you ever had any experiences like that playing sports like in football in high school or in the minor leagues absolutely man um i've had a few concussions mm. that uh you know went undiagnosed okay um but you know i played quarterback so I always had to get back up and make sure, you know, I'm saying that you know, I'm the leader and my teammates are looking to me for, you know, I'm saying I didn't want to let them down, you know, I'm saying I don't want to have the backup quarterback, you know, taking the game or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I've had moments like that where I shook some stuff off I probably shouldn't have. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because, you, you, like you said, we the word concussion, we throw it around like it's nowadays we just throw around concussion like, oh, you had a headache. Like, yes. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of a you know a, a, a serious thing. Yeah, right? my son won't be playing football. He he won't be playing football. If 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 the time comes where he's just pressing me, mm -hmm. I mean he's gonna have to be at least in, in uh, like junior high or something mm -hmm. like that. I played. I started playing football when I was like 
seven or eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's way too young to be playing tackle football. They started off young. Yeah, 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 yeah. They started even younger than that. And so it's way too early. Um, but yeah, man, I'm, I definitely went through put me back in coach or no co no man i'm good i'm good i've done that so before. is there something that you wish that somebody would have said to you um in those moments where uh instead of shake it off dust it off um throw dirt on it what would you have you know could have helped you better i think at that time i probably needed the whole tough toughen it up toughen it up blah 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 but i think just now just looking back um you know, it made me a you know a little tough little dude, but you know, I just uh, fear that you know I would project that on my son when he's not mentally ready for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because he's like I said, he's eight years old, and I'm I'm coaching these kids like they're 18. I mean, I'm I'm not yelling or in their face or anything, but I'm tough on them. I, I make them run. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I I, I, I I'm pr I'm pretty tough on them. So would I change anything? Probably not. But maybe I, I think I, I, what I would like to have happened is that I would have been aware of masculine toxic, toxicity mm -hmm. before I started coaching my son. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I would coach him differently. Okay. Mm -hmm. So knowing that you can be a bit aggressive, yes. what are some of the things that you do on the other side to kind of balance that for your child? That, um, or that you're working on trying to learn? Uh, you know, there's herbal medications out there mm -hmm. that'll make you relax. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, hanging out with certain people make me relax mm -hmm. and like let my guard down. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, I don't want to uh, have a crutch or anything. Mm -hmm. This is on me. I need to figure out, you know what I'm yeah. saying? How to, mm -hmm. how to cool my jets. I think it's, I mean, I think even more so just outside of the realm of sports, period just i don't have any kids but i have friends that have kids and i notice how they all have different parenting styles mm -hmm. when it comes to their children yeah. so with you having a background of being a musician and playing a sport you, you're kind of a, a team builder but kind of a pusher yeah. as well and so with your kids do you do you ever notice like um there's times where you may have to parent each one of them differently because they may all have different personalities and it's the same thing for like when you coach your kids on you know on the field yeah yeah but you you have like different ways of handling each one do you handle everybody the same across the board no they definitely need to be parented differently and okay. i heard something about this um uh, i think earlier today on my morning show we had a, a guy named jay barnett from jay barnett enterprises and he talked about you know uh influencing young young people and uh, parenting your kids and finding out what they need, what they're lacking. My daughter, she is, uh, she's me. She's a show showman. She's a showwoman. She's never seen a mayor. She didn't like um, her, the the gap or the um, fireplaces, her stage. And she's like, ladies and gentlemen, she does it all the time. So uh, I'm definitely gonna have to parent her different than my other kids. You know, my son, uh, he's an athlete. He's a sports guy. Um, He's not shy, but he's definitely not the ext extrovert that my daughter is. No, okay. And so, yeah, I definitely have to parent them definitely differently. And I'm still trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I've only been a parent for eight years, so I'm still trying to figure it out. I, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can definitely see how that, how that could play. Yeah. I was at, I was at the sneaker summit this past Sunday with a friend of mine. Uh, Nar got sold. Ah, custom, I love that's, him. Yeah, that's one of my best friends. He, uh, he does custom shoes, you know. Yeah. And uh, his son was there with him, and his Beautiful. son is, you know, he's really soft spoken. So he was like, "Hey, you know, I took him. I was like, you know, you want to get something to eat? So I took him up to the counter to get a chicken tender basket. <laughs> but when we get, you know, when we got there. He's looking at the lady and he looks at me, he tells me what he wants. I'm like, you're a man, speak up to yes. him. Like, and, and I had to catch myself because I'm right. just like, I'm like, he may be shy, but that I'm right. looking at like, I'm a man, I'm a speak. So I'm, you need to speak because you're a man. And I'm right. and like, and that, in that moment, after I told him to do it, I had to process it afterwards. Yeah. But I definitely see how it could be interesting to like how we may impart part of our personality onto kids. Yeah. Like, hey, you should do this because I would do that. It's interesting. I, I go through the same thing with my son. You know, I make sure that, you know, a solid handshake, you know what I'm saying? Look him in the eye mm -hmm. and you tell the person, my name is Kaysen, it's nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something we have to go over, you know, uh, repetitively because, you know, he's a shy guy, you know, and, and my kids used to do the same thing, you know what I'm saying? Chicken tenders. 
Do you ever now nah, this is something I do and I and I want and I wonder if it's just because I'm a guy because it's not I don't know if women necessarily have to worry about this, but what you just said about the firm handshake. Yeah. Do you ever feel weird when you catch somebody hand the wrong way and you get that like half oh, like, like right. handshake? Yeah, man. Um uh, yeah, so I'm big on nonverbal communication. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I went to Texas Southern and took classes on persuasion and and things like that. So I'm really big on nonverbal communication. So yes, I'm very aware mm -hmm. of you know the way people shake my hand or the way they don't shake my hand. they like their posture, the way they look at me, and things like that. And so that's very important to me. When um, my dad was uh, was the same way because mm -hmm. uh, at one point I was a shy little boy. Um, not shy to the stage or my friends, but strangers that my dad would, would introduce me to. And he'd be like, tell him your name. I'm like, Jibber. Mm -hmm. No, tell him your name, speak up, Jibber. Um But yeah, man, I, I, yeah, I'm big on that. Big on nonverbal. Get in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get in there. I always want to do over. I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't catch, I didn't catch you right the first time. Come let's back. Try let me, let's try this again. Yeah, that, yeah, that can make for, it's just, it makes it kind of awkward sometimes. I always wonder if they're thinking like, yeah, man, he has a soft handshake. I'm like, no, nah, I caught your hand. Get wrong. in there. Wait, let me squeeze. I'm Get in there. Yeah. For the record, as a lady, you know, um, we also have those issues. Okay, okay. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so is there any um, experience that you had with your child where um, it was kind of like a heartbreaking moment where they made you step back and realize maybe I should have handled that differently? Um, do you have an experience you would like to share? Yeah. Let's hear it. Yeah, it's extremely personal. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I recently got a divorce. Mm -hmm. And so I maybe I wish I would have been able to let my kids know in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, I guess there's really no ideal way to let your mm -hmm. kids know that. But uh, yeah, I wish maybe I would have had more time to devise a, more, a better plan to mm -hmm. break that news to them. But they're, they're G's, man, they're handling it great. You know, my, my son has a phone now, and so he literally texts me all the time, <laughs> FaceTimes me all the time. We probably talk more now than we did before. Um, but yeah, maybe that's something that I wish I would have taken back and, and done it a different way or something like that. I don't know, but um, love my kids. Did they all take it the same way or some or I didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, my son, he cried a little bit. Okay. Is um, he the oldest? Yeah. Okay. You know, my daughter, uh, she's three. She was like, oh, daddy's going to have a house too. He's going to have his own house. Kids <laughs> always have the positive spins. Spin. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, uh, you know, I, I mean, I could say, you know, my son I, I had a better grasp of what was going on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I told my aunt, me and mommy are going to be, we're just going to be friends. Mm -hmm. We decided we're just going to be friends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, daddy's going to live somewhere else and you're going to come stay with me. And you're going to stay with mommy. It's going to be, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Now, so I've heard you tell us about your dad, because you said your dad was a musician, but you didn't speak much about your mom. My mom, Maxine, she's a saint. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Maxine, um, she's from uh, Opelousas, Louisiana, mm -hmm. with the rest of her Creole cousins and all that fun stuff. She can burn in that kitchen, that gumbo, that etouffee, that shrimp creole, that jambalaya, she, she gets it in. Okay. Um, She's my best friend, my biggest fan. Um, yeah, I love I love my mom. Uh, I'm probably more of a mama's boy than I am a you know a daddy's boy. Okay. Uh, With that being said, is there yeah. an experience that may have caused a rift between your best friend and the whole wide world? Um, between me and my mom? Yeah, I know we all have experiences, and we want to try and discuss those kind of hard to talk about topics. Yeah, uh, y'all are really get going in. <laughs> <laughs> this counts as therapy, I'm sure. <laughs> um, you know, um, I guess the, the divorce thing. You know, um, you know, explaining that to my mom, she, it was hard for her, um, but she's okay now. Do you feel she was supportive through the process um, in a way that uh, was helpful to you? Like supportive is a word, like supportive, 
it's different because you can mean supportive as in I support your decision, you're making the right decision, mm -hmm. or uh, support could just be I'm here for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk, mm -hmm. I'll, you know, I'll, if you want me to come over, I will. Supportive in the way that you need it her to be. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, because she's. Just keep doing a 100 with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's know. very important. Yeah, man. And then I get, and I say, when, you know, see you like thinking, you're like, you're trying to reflect back on the conversation because I recently announced something similar to that, a separation from okay. my spouse. And so with the question that she asked about supportive in the way that you need them to be, which is interesting, is that a lot of people were like supportive, like, you know, just, you know, focus on you and work on your happiness and everything. You have those quite the select few that will come at you like you didn't think through the decision that you made for yourself, which can be very tough. Right. And so did you face anything like that? Not necessarily, no, not necessarily with your mom, but like any of your friends, like when you decided that, look, we're just gonna be better off as friends. Yeah. If anybody yeah. kind of came at you, or did you feel like anybody was like, I feel like me, you know, some people are picking sides. Yeah, they yeah. Don't have to. Oh, yeah. you know that. You yeah. know that for sure, for mm -hmm. sure. You know, a lot of, you know, my friends were, I take their quotes away. Yeah. A lot of my friends were, <laughs> um, you need to work it out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, uh, uh, you know, think about it, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that was after the decision's already been made. I was really hoping for more people to be like, hey, man, how are you doing? How, how yeah. like, are you OK? Like, uh, how, you know, obviously they're going to, you know, ask about the kids. Oh, the poor kids, the poor kids. And I was of this mindset that like, please don't bring any negative energy around me. Don't be bringing that poor kid bullsh mm -hmm. bull stuff. I don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear about um, what I should and shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. Just how this, your decision affects everyone else I, around I, you. Yeah, and I and I realize it, it 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 does. And I've talked to my cousins, I've talked to my aunts, I've talked to my you know my uh, my brother and my you know people around me, and um, I appreciate their concern. It's just that I don't want any pity mm -hmm. or anything like that that would bring any negative energy around me. Mm -hmm. Bring positive. How are you, man? What can I do for you? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Congratulations. What's next for you? And see, That's what's what I want to hear. What's interesting with that is that oftentimes when people do it now, like I have a couple of friends that are like either going through divorces, recently divorced, Same. separated, or, you know, kind of estranged from their spouses. And what's interesting is some of the ones that I've talked to, they've all kind of gone through that where it's like, um, everybody's so worried about how it affects everybody around you yes. and not how it's affecting you yeah. when you're the person that had to endure in being in, in being in a relationship. And it's like, nobody's perfect. Like, I'm not, I wasn't the perfect husband. My wife wasn't the perfect wife. Mm -hmm. and Nobody is. But the thing is, we know what we dealt with within our relationship. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's interesting to see people try to impart their views on you and be like, oh, Y'all should try to work it out. I'm like, uh, we did. <laughs> we kind of did. It kind of was a thing. Uh, it just didn't. So I don't really understand that that phrasing yeah. when people come at you that way. So it's, you know, it's, it's good that you were able to push through that because some people like, man, it's very tough for them to deal with that, especially being that like me and my wife's relationship was very public. So it's like we're like goals to huh. like you know to some people, and it's just like, oh man, if we decide to do that. We let a lot of people down, but this is like, what about us? Yeah, what like, about us? So, well, you know, and the funny thing is, is like you said, uh, um, not many people ask how you were doing. Mm. This is gonna come full circle. It's part of that. You need to toughen up. You're a man. Mm -hmm. You need to rub some dirt on it and keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, um, get up and keep going, man. You, you know, man up. Yeah, that's part of that whole thing. And, you know, I never, I never, I, you know, the masculine toxicity. In social media, we're always worried about how it affects everybody else, mm -hmm. you know, especially yeah. women, how, you know, masculine toxicity affects women. But we rarely talk about how it affects us. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? There, you know, and uh, I, I swear, I promise today is it's something that I realized that male toxicity it's cancerous for us too. Yeah, it's you know what I'm saying, and it's cancerous for our kids too. I didn't a realize that. A friend of mine, let me, so probably don't have to wrap up, but just a okay. moment here. But 
let me ask you this question. A friend of mine asked me recently, or I posted a question that was like, women have safe spaces. My dad was homeless for a while. I noticed that there's way more shelters for women yeah. than there are for men. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of safe spaces for women to be able to reach out. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like as a man, you have a safe space? Where they be amongst your friends you could talk to? Or, because when everybody was asking about the safe space, we all kept saying the barbershop, the barbershop. That's where we can go and talk and be men. But even then, it depends on what type of man you are when you're in the barbershop. If you are a more feminine man, you, the, the barbershop might not be the place for That's you. That's not your place, right. And me, as a man, I've always felt that I'm not like the most manly of men. Mm -hmm. I talk with my hands, I have effeminate gestures sometimes. And so mm -hmm. I, I always wonder when they ask, when somebody asks that question, I'm like, what, do you feel like there's any safe spaces for men or do you have a safe space for, as a man? Uh, that's a great question. You know, um, obviously you want your safe place to be your home mm -hmm. where you lay your head. Mm -hmm. uh, that's recently changed for me. Okay. Uh, my I think being around my children is a safe space, mm -hmm. you know, because they love me no matter what. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They look up to me no matter what. Um, being around music, I think around live music lowers my heart rate, so it makes a safe place for me. Being around my parents and my brother. Those are safe places for me. Do you feel like you have anybody that you can talk to that is just without judgment? Like somebody that can just you can just vent to and you're not like in their head turning solutions already for you to just mm -hmm. I do. I do have somebody. Um, I do. How important do you think that is? Oh, man. In the industry that we're in, man. You have to have somebody that you can turn off around. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, especially when you're doing a lot of things and you're always on, it's vital to your sanity mm -hmm. to have somebody that you can turn off around yeah. and just talk and talk, and listen and listen and talk and talk and talk. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's vital. I completely to our agree. sanity. I completely agree, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to create this to kind of dive into giving people, black people, especially a safe space to discuss those things that um, we don't always feel we can discuss with everybody that somebody might be turning the wheel going for. Um, we want to encourage people to look into therapy and things like that if they don't feel like they have that person. Um, have you ever considered therapy in those instances where you're like, I can't do this alone or at all? Absolutely, I've considered therapy. I haven't pulled the trigger yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe this show will be a catalyst for that. <laughs> um, I got some baggage to unpack. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely do. Uh, you know, Charlemagne the God, he, he has a book out called Shook Wins and he talks about anxiety and things like that. Mm -hmm. He's of the mindset that we should all go to therapy whether we know that we have something to talk about or not. That's Because 99% yeah. of us will discover that something did happen or, or there's something that we could talk about and unpack mm -hmm. um, with, with a trusted person. And so, um, yeah, I've definitely thought about going to therapy, especially since, you know, the recent life change. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to uh, make the same mistakes. Uh, I don't want to, you know, uncover uh, maybe the, the, the spark that's making me do the things I do or say the things I say. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then, you know, maybe therapy doesn't look like me lying on a couch and some old mm -hmm. white man is right there mm -hmm. I'm talking to. Maybe this is it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's talking to my friends. Maybe it's talking to the people around me. But, uh, or maybe it's just going to church a little more. Yeah.